do human beings rise from the dead? Who is this Jesus who the witnesses say died and came back to life? Is he really risen from the dead, as the Bible says? Is he really the Son of God, as he claimed to be? Or was he a fraud, a liar, and a lunatic? as his opponents claimed he was. Even the opponents don't claim it. The Bible reports that Jesus was born 2,000 years ago in the Middle East, in Bethlehem, a small and insignificant village. Today, mainly Muslims live here. Christians are a minority. Churches here remind us of the man whose name is known around the world. One hundred miles further north is a small village called Nazareth. It was such an insignificant place that people made jokes about it. Jesus lived here with his family. Jesus grew up in the Jewish tradition. He learned all about the Old Testament and the Jewish writings. As an adult, he became a rabbi. He heals many people of their illnesses and teaches them to understand the will of God. He also claims he is the Son of God. He is loved by the common people. And the Jewish establishment considers him to be a blasphemer, and the Romans a troublemaker. No, no, no! You see for yourself. Yes. No! Get off Freddy's license. Six for six ninety nine. Walk in and walk out with you. Four eight PM. Pizza, pizza. They also visit Nazareth Village in the north of Israel with an open air museum where they built houses in the same way as they did 2,000 years ago and a model of a garden too. Here we will reconstruct some of the events of Jesus' life, which will help us to understand what happened. Luke, for instance, starts his gospel, his report on Jesus' life, by declaring, I have purpose to examine meticulously what and how it happened then. And he uses the Greek word, akribos, painstakingly. He goes on, I have interviewed the eyewitnesses and verified it, and then I wrote it down in a good order. Another author is John. He claims in his report that he accompanied Jesus and was an eyewitness to Jesus' actions and his teaching. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke do not claim to be written by eyewitnesses of the resurrection. They claim to be recorded for us the testimony of people who were there. The Gospel of John claims to be written by an eyewitness of the resurrection. John writes in his report that he saw Jesus die on the cross. This man stood at the foot of the cross. This man went into the courtyard of the high priest together with Peter. This man was at the tomb of Jesus. And within the Gospel itself, this person provides the testimony to Jesus. But how reliable and trustworthy are these authors? What are the criteria for an historical document to be considered accurate? For scientific research, it is important that more than one reliable source bear witness to the event. How well is the life of Jesus documented? Are there any other historians who wrote about the life of Jesus besides the biblical witnesses? In the case of the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, 
we're quite fortunate because we have multiple sources that talk about his resurrection. It is the time when Jesus Christ was tried by him and crucified. But what kind of body would that spot it's going to be that Another criteria that lends credibility to an historical document is archaeological evidence. In Caesarea, a Mediterranean seaport, archaeologists found an inscription with the name Pontius Pilate. Many objects from the times of Jesus have been preserved here and bear witness of the Roman occupation force and the Jewish world of 2,000 years ago. We have points of archaeology, or we have outside testimony from farther afield that help us know that uh, this, in fact, happened, or this person, in fact, was there. Twenty years ago, the tomb of Pelagius was found. He becomes something of a fixed record. There was no information more detailed and contemporary about any other event in antiquity than about the life of Jesus. Another criteria that makes an historical manuscript true is how connected the authors were to the actual events and how much time elapsed from when the actual events occurred to when the authors wrote about them. The Bible's the texts of the Gospels are so trustworthy because the authors had immediate connections to the events, either in person or by interviewing eyewitnesses. The texts were also written only a few years, or at the most a few decades after they happened. That's a much better situation. The Alexander myths and the legends originated even later. So you have to acknowledge that the distance to the original events of the New Testament is extremely favorable. It is even more favorable than with, for example, Tacitus. Tacitus is a major Roman historian who wrote about the first century in the beginning of the second century and mentioned Jesus Christ. But his text was written several decades further away from the events than the texts of the New Testament. There are New Testament manuscripts uh, dating from as early as the beginning of the second century and going on after that, the means 5,000. That in itself makes it easier to determine what was the actual text and that, in turn, is important in determining whether something is reliable or not. But how is it possible that the sayings of Jesus were not forgotten? How were they preserved and passed on to the next generation? In the time of Yeshua, uh, a rabbi's words were memorized by his disciples, who had learned all of their learning as they grew up was all by memorization. That was the educational system, and they had uh, tremendous uh, memories. In a community of faith, for the generations to come. I tell you who hear me, the Son of your enemy. Here is the one who will betray you. Now you will betray me first. Now what was this Jesus like? was revealed through these eyewitness accounts. Was he trustworthy, authentic? Did he practice what he preached? Or did he seduce people, as the political elite of his day maintained? Was war es, dass Jesus so attraktiv machte? What made Jesus so popular? While reading the New Testament, we meet an extraordinary personality, displaying great clarity and an immense love and affection. Mit einer ganz großen Zuwendung, einer ganz großen Liebe. He spoke in the synagogue in Capernaum. He spoke in people's homes. And the excitement with what he was saying and what he was doing was so great that eventually he was speaking to thousands on hillsides. And they were even following him from town to town in order to be close to him and listen to him and watch what he was doing. There were miracles in his ministry. People were coming to Jesus to be healed. He was not simply a teacher. Oh, is. He was more like what we know of, of the Hasidim, these um, people a little bit off-center from the main culture, 
people attracted for for what this person can do. He can pray and God will listen to him and answer his prayers. And that will bring crowds from 